and welcome to my channel. My name is Rose Wrights and I write and narrate Miraculous Ladybug fan fiction. If you've missed the previous 15 parts, I will link them in the description box below. If you enjoy this series and want more fan fiction in your life, please consider subscribing. Also, drop a comment below for Mr. YouTube. If you don't know what to comment, say Alia's birthday party. Without further ado, please enjoy Happy With You, Chapter 16, Surprise. Marinette, let me see, let me see, Tiki chirped. Marinette had been hard at work for a few days creating something special for Alia's birthday. Her best friend had a ladybug charm hanging from her phone that she bought as soon as she started the lady blog. Marinette thought it would be great to have a phone case to match. And there, finished. Marinette held up the sparkly phone case in front of her like a proud Rafiki holding up Simba for all to see. The phone case was red like the superheroine suit with small ladybugs all over it with shining black gems that represented spots. Oh, Marinette, the little red Kwame gushed. It is beautiful. She'll love it. You think so? Thanks, Tiki. And I even have some time to spare. It's only 5 p.m. I said I would be there to help Nino set up. Marinette frantically shoved her feet into her black heels and threw her hair up in a stylish ponytail and flew down the staircase. Being as clumsy as she is, it's a miracle she didn't break an ankle while running down three flights of stairs in her three-inch heels. As she exited the bakery, she was caught off guard. Oh! She ran headfirst into something. Uh, someone? It knocked her back into the door of the bakery and she fell to the ground. Marinette! The handsome face stared at her speechless for a moment before offering both of his hands to lift her to her clumsy feet. We have to stop meeting like this. He smiled and gave her a genuine chuckle. Adrian, thank you. I wish I could stay and talk, but I'm running super late. She went to take off again, but Adrian put his hand on her shoulder. Ollie is party, right? I actually came to see if you wanted to walk together. He put a hand on the back of his neck nervously. Walk? With you? Um, I'd love to. Let's go. She grabbed his wrist and broke into a jog. Both of their faces flushed red at the contact, but neither of them would be able to tell if it was the jog or the teenage angst. Even though they were in a relationship, everything still felt new. The contact, the intimacy they shared, it was all so new and wonderful. They laughed and talked the whole way there. He teased her as she gave an embarrassed grin. Moments with Marinette were Adrian's favorite. Marinette pulled her peacoat even tighter as the cold evening air tickled her skin. Finally, they arrived at Le Grand Paris Hotel, where Alia's party would take place in less than an hour. Alia's mother, of course, would be catering the event as she was a chef at this esteemed hotel. What took you so long, dudes? Nino greeted them as the couple entered the foyer. Adrian received a fist bump, while Marinette received a one-arm hug. Sorry, it was my fault. I was finishing up Alia's present, Marinette said, slightly bowing in an apologetic manner. No sweat. Come on, we better hurry. She will be here soon. The three rushed around, setting up DJ equipment, getting the food from the kitchen, and setting it up, and adding some decorations. The hotel looked beautiful as always, and their finishing touches made it even better. Guests started arriving, mostly their classmates and Alia's parents and sisters. Even Chloe was there. Not like she had much of a choice. She lived at Le Grand Paris after all. Then the girl of the hour entered the foyer, feigning a shocked expression. For me? She gasped. For you, babe. Nino said, stealing a kiss from the birthday girl's cheek. The party raged on into the night. Everyone was dressed to the nines. Marinette had a blast dancing with several of her classmates, and everything went still when Nino approached his DJ set and said, Yo, for all of you lovebirds out there, eyeing down Marinette and Adrian, this one's for you. A familiar melody cascaded down the banisters to their ears. Her cheeks now matched the blush tone of her A-line dress. May I? Adrian bowed slightly and offered her his hand. She nodded and they broke into a waltz. They quietly chatted, acutely aware of the eyes that were on them. Marinette appeared anxious. Why? 
Why are they staring at us? Adrian shrugged as they continued to dance. Probably because you're so beautiful. You're thinking of yourself. Marinette giggled and laid her head on his chest, hearing his strong and steady heartbeat. He put one hand under her chin and lifted her head to meet his striking emerald gaze. He whispered in her ear, Do you want to give them something to stare at? What do you mean? Instead of answering, he pulled her towards him and planted a lingering kiss on her lips. He wrapped her in his embrace and she melted into him. The onlooker's mouth gaped at the sight, especially Alia, who had a mixture of emotions play across her face. Oops. Marinette hadn't told her best friend that she and THE Adrian Agreste were dating. Her swirling thoughts were interrupted as the doors of the hotel lobby flew open dramatically, letting in the cold winter air. Surprise! The unexpected guest grinned wickedly. Gasps emerged from the crowd, followed by screams. Adrian! Marinette screamed. Go find shelter! But Marinette... He knew she was Ladybug, but his heart sieged at the thought of leaving her alone. With him. Marinette and Adrian found themselves face to face with Hawk Moth. Marinette seemed to be frozen in place. She wasn't. She was formulating a plan, but there wasn't time. In Akuma, it fluttered its evil wings and took hold of two party guests at once as they were touching each other. Rose and Gulico were swiftly turned into their akumatized states of Reflecta and Princess Fragrance. Run, Adrian! Marinette urged once more as she dashed off by herself. Two transformations later and Ladybug and Cat Noir were on the scene. By the time they had returned, there were several Reflectas running around and several of those Reflectas were being servants to their Princess Fragrance. Attention! The Reflecta army looked at Princess Fragrance. Get Ladybug and Cat Noir's Miraculous! Now! At your service, Princess Fragrance! The Bubblegum Pink army turned around as they charged at the superheroes. They both jumped up and leapt across the army, being careful not to get zapped. Cat Noir found himself face to face with the Julica Reflecta, who attempted to turn him into one of her. Uh uh uh, he chided. I don't look good in pink. I'm more of a black leather fan, actually. He grabbed Reflecta's arm as she was charging her zap, and he pointed it at Princess Fragrance, who was now dressed in all pink. Princess Fragrance shrieked, Get that cat! Uh Uh-oh, wish I could stay, ladies, but I really gotta go. He turned and hauled himself to Ladybug's side. Making friends, kitty cat? She rolled her eyes, still scoping her surroundings to find Hawk Moth. Astute as always, bugaboo. There! She pointed to the top of the stairs. Ladybug zipped to meet him and engaged him in hand-to-hand combat. Close combat is not her specialty, but that didn't dissuade her. If anything, it distracted the villain from Ladybug's partner sliding between his legs and grabbing his staff that Hawk Moth had previously been fighting with. No! He lunged for Cat Noir, but not before the leather-clad superhero yelled, Cataclysm! Before their eyes, the staff disintegrated. The momentum of Hawk Moth's lunge knocked Cat Noir off the balcony, falling to the floor below. The granite floor cracked under the pressure. Hawk Moth was slowly approaching the superheroine, so she called for her lucky charm, a boomerang. Usually, it takes a moment to figure out what she should do with the lucky charm, but she felt confident. What are you planning to do with that? Hawk Moth belittled her. We aren't here to play a game. Are you sure about that? Ladybug said sarcastically and let the boomerang rip through the air. You missed, Bug. The way he said Bug sounded venomous as it passed his lips. I wasn't aiming for you. She crossed her arms, obviously pleased with herself. It was at that moment that her plan was coming to fruition. True, the boomerang didn't hit him, but it swung around him and hit the bracelet on Julica Reflecta's arm. Suddenly, they transformed into themselves, free from Hawk Moth's clutches. Ladybug purified the evil butterfly and reversed damage created by the Butterfly Miraculous Holder. It's over, Hawk Moth. Ladybug said as Cat Noir joined her by her side. You have no staff and no more Akuma victims. Hand us your Miraculous and no one has to get hurt. 
She held out her hand, waiting to receive his miraculous, ignoring the simultaneous beeping of her earrings and cat's ring. Hawk Moth smirked. You don't have much time, children. Give it up. The heroes stood, staring intensely at him. Before they could react, Hawk Moth had his arms around Ladybug in a chokehold. No matter how much she squirmed, she was unable to escape his talon-like grip. No! Let her go! Cat Noir shouted. Hawk Moth already procured one of her earrings. A blinding pink flash started to reveal her heels, the hem of her blush-colored dress, and ate away at her mask. Evil laughter escaped Hawk Moth's sinister smile. Tick tock, Ladybug. You have nowhere to run and you're running out of time. She attempted to thrash around to cause his grip to loosen, but to no avail. Her partner and best friend came flying towards them with his fist out. I said, let her go! He soared into Hawk Moth, rapidly making contact. His fist caught the villain in an uppercut, catching him off guard. The earring dropped to the floor and rolled out of sight. Hawk Moth was taken aback. Ladybug escaped his evil clutches and made a dive for the other half of her miraculous. Thanks, Chaton. Ladybug said after getting her miraculous settled. She assumed a fighting stance. Any time, milady. He placed a gentle hand on her shoulder. But the villain was nowhere to be found. He's gone? Ladybug muttered in disbelief. No sense worrying about it now. Your earrings. And your ring. She bit her lip anxiously. They probably had one minute left. I have a feeling he fled the scene to prepare for the next time we find ourselves in this situation. I think you're right. Anyways, milady, he turned to her looking suave. Until next time. He winked and pressed her knuckles against his warm, soft lips. She couldn't feel much through the suit, but it sent ladybugs to crawl around her stomach. Always. She mustered a smile and both heroes took off. Wow, okay. You missed everything. Where were you, girl? Alia squealed to her best friend. I got turned into a reflecta and I was serving Princess Fragrance. She lied smoothly. Adrian smiled, knowing she was lying. Yeah, me too. Pink is definitely not my color, he said as he gestured to the black suit with the red tie he was wearing. After a brief giggle between the friends, Alia stopped abruptly and said, Wait, when were you going to tell me? She looked straight at Marinette, and it felt as if Alia's gaze went to her very core. Marinette chose to play dumb. Uh, tell you what, exactly? Marinette! She all but screeched and took Marinette in Adrian's arms. You two kissed? What? Since when? I mean, are you together? Dating? Alia looked extremely pleased. The new couple looked at each other in embarrassment, their faces pink. Adrian was the first to answer. Yes, we are. Dating, I mean. It hasn't been long. He looked at Marinette so she could help him out. Yeah, maybe a week? Something like that. Sorry, Alia, Nino. I wanted to tell you, but I wasn't sure what to say. She looked down to avoid their prying gaze. Well, Alia started. Marinette ready for her friend to explode. I'm so happy for you. And to find out on my birthday. That makes this day even more special. Marinette opened her eyes wide in shock. Really? You aren't mad? Of course not, Alia said dismissively. Nino nodded in affirmation at her words. You guys are the will-they-won't-they they couple of the century. So I'm happy for both of you. Nino scooped all of his friends up in a massive hug. Yeah, dudes. I'm happy if you guys are happy. And they were happy. Happier than they have ever been. And they were together. After a year of pining after Adrian, he was finally hers. It was real. Nothing could ruin their happiness. Not even Hawk Moth. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this, don't forget to like and subscribe. Chapter 17 is on the way. Stay miraculous!